Let me get to climate change. You saw these protests around the world just a few days ago. Our next guest says exaggeration about global warming is a big part of the whole picture here. And look who's with us. <laughs> Bjorn Lumberg, Copenhagen Consensus Center president. Let me start with this. You, you are a global warmer. Yeah. You acknowledge climate change. Absolutely. And you say that human beings are partly responsible for it. Yes. So what's this exaggeration? Tell me. Well, it's the, the fact that people are telling you, oh, my God, we're going to end, you know, 20, sorry, 38% of all Americans now believe that because of global warming, humanity is going to go extinct. That's just absurd. Yes, it and, is. Absurd. And if you, if you look across the world, 48% of everyone on the planet now believes that, according to a new uh, survey by YouGov. This is just absurd. Global warming is a problem, but it's yeah. not the end of the world. And if we think this is the end of the world, if we're panicking, we're very likely to make very bad decisions. Yes, because you're scared to death. Yes. So you jump into things like the Green New Deal. What do you think of the Green New Deal? Well, so fundamentally, the Green New Deal is a good... It has good intentions. It wants to fix climate, but it basically wants to say we want to fix it right now because we're very, very scared. So it could end up spending probably two point one trillion dollars per year to not actually achieve very much. Remember, if everyone in the rich world, not just the U.S., but everyone, you know, so the U.K., the European Union, Australia, Japan, all the other rich countries stop emitting any CO2 tomorrow the net impact would be to reduce temperatures by the end of the century about 0 0.7 degrees Fahrenheit. That's it? So, yeah. So this is not an issue about cutting emissions in rich world first and foremost. It's about making sure that everyone eventually gets there. And the only way we're going to do that is not by telling everyone, I'm sorry, could you do with a lot less? It is by going through technological innovation. If we can innovate green new energy that's cheaper than fossil fuels, Okay. Everyone of will course. buy it. But we're not there yet, are we? No, we're, we're not. not even and, close, and, are we? And, and the point is, while we're panicking and spending all our resources on these policies that do almost no good, we're actually not ramping up our investment in green energy R&D. Over the last two, three, sorry, three decades, the world has actually seen a decline from about 0.06 to 0.03% of our GDP on green energy. We're now only spending about $15 billion. We should be spending a lot more. And that would be an incredibly much cheaper way to fix climate rather than the current one. We're being Where should that research money be going? Solar, wind, nuclear? All of the above. All the of the, the, the so point you, is, you don't we, discount nuclear. You, no, you're no, no, okay no. with nuclear. Well, the rest All of the greens are not. Well, <laughs> a lot of greens also recognize that if you're actually going to fix this problem, you probably have to look at nuclear. My concern with nuclear is not safety, because we know that it's one of the safest things, it's cost. We unfortunately also know that the third generation nuclear has not been cheap. Now, the fourth generation nuclear is promising to be incredibly safe and incredibly cheap. But of course, they promised us that with the other three generations. So, you know, let's look into this. We can look at all of these technologies. And the beautiful thing about research and development is that is so much cheaper than anything else. That's why if we spent, you know, in the order of $100 billion globally, so that's much, much less than what we're spending on climate change right now. We could actually fix this problem in the next couple of decades. What do you make of some on the hard left, the way out there on the left? They want to reduce the world's population. And Bernie Sanders has even gone so far as to say American taxpayers should pay for abortions in the third world to cut down on population. Now, frankly, that horrifies me. How about you? Well, fundamentally, I don't think you get to tell other people how many kids they have. There is a good argument to have kids being spaced better, that is, offering contraception, because that actually means the poor women in the third world can space their kids better, they can have them when it fits into their lives. It typically means they'll have slightly fewer and they will survive much more. So that's actually a good argument. But you can't go around and tell people you can't have kids. I mean, it's a little bit like saying, just enough of me, too many of you. Well, would you like to reduce the world's population growth? Well, look, the way you do that is by making people rich. Once they exactly. become exactly. wealthy and yes. prosperous, they stop having five That's or ten kids, true. and they start having, you know, less than two. That's right. You, once you get a large middle class, exactly. access to, uh, uh, to uh, birth control, yeah. and an, a, an educated female workforce, Especially you get all of those three, yeah. and your population starts to go down. It's yeah. true all over the world, no matter what race, geographical place you go to, that's it. That's exactly. how you do it.
Welcome back, Bjorn. Thank you. Good to see you. <laughs> you got your trademark navy blue T-shirt. <laughs> yes. Now, you look good. Bjorn, thank you very much, sir. Appreciate thank it. You. Always.